and welcome. We're very excited to have you here. It's going to be a really helpful night to hear from all the resource teachers. And I'm kicking you off just to go over a few things with you. First of all, congratulations on helping get your children to where they are right now. Um, we know that uh, we've seen them the last, I guess, couple weeks now. Um, the counseling department, we've met one-on-one -on -one with each of your children to go over their course requests for senior year. So we know how they're feeling right about now. Um, and so congrats to you as parents for helping them get there and to a wonderful senior year next year. Um, as I said, we met with all of your children to go over uh, their course requests. And the exciting thing about being a senior is that your children have so many options and choices to pick from as far as their schedule goes. So students in their senior year can have a full schedule similar to what they've had the last uh, three years where they have seven academic classes. So that's one option for students to do. Another option is for students to take an internship. So we have students that will um, partake in the internship, typically in the afternoon timeframe, um, whether it's an education internship. I have a student this year who's interning at a vet's office. Um, we have some interns at like PT places, um, businesses. And so those students typically will have around five classes um, and then they leave in the afternoon to attend their internship site. So that's a wonderful opportunity if um, your child, you know, might kind of be interested in a specific field in their career, and it's a good time to see what that's like for them. Another opportunity is dual enrollment, um, and that means that students are duly enrolled in Montgomery College classes as well as high school classes. So this can range in what it appears. Um, some students will take a class at the Universities of Shady Grove, which we provide transportation to in the morning. Um, and so students will get there for periods two and three in the day, and then they'll return to school for periods four through eight. Um, sometimes students will take classes virtually through Montgomery College, and students depending upon what time that class is offered, will come into the Career Center and do the class virtually um, during that time and that session for that class. And lastly, the other option is for students to go and attend um, classes at the various MC buildings with other MC students. So that's also a wonderful opportunity for them. And so deciding between all those choices is really hard, right? There's no right or wrong answer. Every one of your children is very different. Um, and so thinking about their future and what you think is best for them. Some things to consider are the graduation requirements. All children must meet the MCPS graduation requirements in order to graduate. The counselors know these by heart, um, and so we definitely make sure that all your children have those credits. However, it's really important for you to consider what those are as well when you're thinking about their, um, their transcript and signing up for courses. The other thing you wanna think about if your child um, is thinking about a four-year college that they would like to attend, starting to look at what those colleges are and what those requirements might be for them to apply. So some schools might require four years of a science um, class instead of the three that we require at Wooten and, and the county. So just looking at those things to make sure that um, your child is signed up for the classes required to apply to a specific college if that is something that they might know at this time. And then the last thing we always tell our kids, which they've heard for the last three years, is to balance their schedules. Right? We want them to think about all the cool things that they do outside of the building, and they will have those senior year college applications if that is in their future. And so that can be um, a lot of work for them. And so just thinking about balancing all of their academics with everything else that they have going on. Just realized I wasn't sharing my screen, so you got to see my face that whole time. I apologize. Um, let's see here. So there is an internship interest form um, and students can fill that out if they're interested. And then I've also included the dual enrollment um, link uh, with more information about dual enrollment. And just recently, they uh, the county has indicated that all MC classes will be free. 
Yes, that is, you heard me right. <laughs> All the classes are free and paid for by the county. Um, and that is a new development uh, for the next school year. So it's very exciting. If your child would like to get those college credits, um, they certainly can do that and it is free of charge. So when um, your child is looking at the options for what classes to take at Wooten, um, we recommend that they look at our online course bulletin, which they've been using now for the last several years. And here you can get it directly from the um, Wooten website. You'll see that it's alphabetical by the subject. And so you can scroll through. Um, let's say I wanna learn about some social studies options. I can then scroll further down and it should populate some options for me. Here are many of their elective courses. If I'm not familiar with what that course is all about, I can then click and it'll tell me even more information, more detailed information about the course and exactly what's covered in that class. Um, so that's what I've shown you here on the screen. And then we ask that students um, go ahead and use either the academic planning worksheet to help guide them I think your kids probably have this figured out by now, so they might not need that, which is okay. And quite honestly, we've met with them one-on-one, -on -one, so they all should have an idea of the classes they wanna take. Um, and when they go into, I like this view the best, when they go into their student view, which you guys can access as their parents, you'll see under the course request, you should see a list of all the classes that they've registered for. And what we've told kids right now is um, if they're interested in dual enrollment or an internship, we've asked them to sign up for seven classes. And then once it's confirmed that they are a part of the internship program or they are a part of um, the dual enrollment program, which I believe opens in March, then we'll go ahead and remove the classes um, to replace with that internship opportunity or that dual enrollment class. All course requests are due February 3rd, that's Friday in a couple weeks, um, right after actually the second semester starts, pretty exciting. As always, I'm gonna make sure am I looking at my notes so I didn't forget anything. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. Um, ask the resource teachers, they're here to help you. Mr. Rohner is the assistant principal for your children myself as the head of the counseling department or any of the counselors that your children see, we're here to help. Please feel free to email us and reach out. Um, we're just really excited to be a part of their journey these past couple of years and to see them progress into their senior year. Please enjoy tonight. Um, it's lots of information, but really wonderful uh, information. And as you have questions, go ahead and type them into that Q&A. Um, and I will answer those questions. I'm trying to see if there's anything. I will go ahead and answer those questions for you. And I'm going to pass it along to our wonderful uh, CTE RT. That's a lot of words, but Mr. Paul Turner, take it away. Thank you very much. Good evening. Let me just get set up here a little bit. Okay. My name is Paul Turner, and I'm here to talk about a few different uh, offerings we have in the career and technology department for your rising senior. Uh, before we get to that, the most important thing that I'm going to share with you is you are your child is required to complete one full year of a technology education course prior to graduation. At Wound High School, we have two different course offerings that satisfy that requirement. We have Foundations of Computer Science and AP Computer Science Principles. If your child has not completed one of these classes yet, um, we are running out of time. This has to take place next year. Uh, so please you know, double check the transcript or, or contact your child's counselor to make sure that's been taken care of. If it has not been taken care of yet, it needs to happen next school year. Foundations of Computer Science is offered over the summer as an online course, but that is done through MCPS's online learning. That is not done directly through Wooten High School. You can find out more information about that on the MCPS online learning page, or you can contact me as well, and I can, I can send you those links. So again, very important. One of those two classes uh, needs to be completed by the time your child graduates. Um, if your child has already completed one of these classes and is interested in maybe exploring computer science, this is a field that's been exploding over the past like 10 to 15 years easily. It's per permeated into almost every uh, field, all walks of life in society. And you know, computer science as a whole really is there to 
to help you practice and sharpen um, your critical thinking skills. If there's been any thought to try and taking any CS courses, but there has been time to schedule, but now maybe sometimes it's freed up, we encourage you to explore one of these three right here, web development, computer programming one, Net, sorry, four classes. We also have IT essentials and intro to networks. Um, none of these classes have any prerequisites. Uh, you're not expected to have any background knowledge uh, before coming into any of these. So I'm just going to kind of walk through each of these classes uh, rather quickly, starting with uh, IT essentials. In IT essentials, students will learn about how a computer works, all the components of a computer. They'll actually learn how to build a computer from the ground up in our physical lab. They'll learn how to configure and troubleshoot a computer, and eventually this will prepare them to sit and be successful on the CompTIA IA A plus certification exam, which is a uh, industry standard exam. Another course we offer is Intro to Networks. Uh, by the end of this class, well, not only did they learn all the components of the internet, all the different layers, they'll eventually learn how to construct a local area network, which basically every office, uh, school, and really workplace needs uh, nowadays in order to you know, survive and thrive. So learn how to configure and troubleshoot networks in that course, along with some cybersecurity. Uh, computer programming one is really the intro class. If anybody is interested in majoring in computer science, uh, this class is taught using the high level programming language C++. This is an advanced level course, which means it's weighted uh, in a similar fashion that an honors class is weighted. And again, if your child's never gone around or had the time to, for, to dabble in any CS, this would be a jumping off point. Maybe they think or think about majoring or minoring in CompSci. Computer programming one is the class they should take. Uh, in that class, we learn how to create variables in C++. We learn how to manipulate and write and trace through loops and if statements, uh, how to examine uh, arrays and matrices. And we just create a lot of different apps and text-based games uh, that really help to develop those critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. So it's, it's just a great class, even if CS isn't necessarily in their future. Uh, for those who may have more of an artistic flair, we offer web development. Again, all these classes don't have any uh, prerequisites whatsoever. In web dev, you learn how to create web pages using HTML and CSS. Uh, you really learn how to design them out, make them look fancy, flashy, and pretty. We learn how to edit and create photos and, and some basic animation. Uh, in addition to those full year course offerings, we do have single semester course offerings, both in personal finance and marketing. So again, those are single semester courses. More information about those can be found on our course bulletin. And of course, it's possible that your child is already in one of these classes. For example, they might be in programming two right now, which makes them eligible to take programming three next year. It could be an intro to networks now which makes them eligible for routing and switching next year. So again, um, if that's the case and they're not sure which uh, class is best for them to take next, um, please have them talk to their counselor or their current teacher. Um, if you have any questions for me, there's my email address. And of course, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, next, uh, we and I don't see any current questions in the Q&A Q to live. So I think you're good if you'll just stick around. For a little bit. Uh, next up, we have Miss Parsons. Welcome, Miss Parsons. She's going to share some um, course offerings for social studies. Welcome, Miss Parsons. Thank you, Mr. Brunner. Good evening, everybody. Like uh, Mr. Turner, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys and present the slides. I'm having some technical issues this evening. I apologize. Okay, not wanting to share with me today. Okay, so uh, if your student is in going into the 12th grade, they should have hopefully completed their three um, required courses for social studies as of this year, especially if they have spent all three years at Wooten or in MCPS. So the three courses required are US history, American government and world history. So we're going to talk about the electives that are offered in social studies for this particular grade. We um, now have a huge amount of possibilities for your student to take a social studies course if their uh, schedule allows it. You can see we do offer um, lots of AP courses, AP art history, AP comparative government, AP Econ, both micro and macro, AP European history, 
human geography and psychology. Your student may have already taken some of these. By all means, uh, if they have an interest in the course, please encourage them to take it. We also have uh, several one semester classes. They are LGBTQ plus studies, African American history, philosophy, and world military history. The other courses that you see, law, sociology, model UN, are all pure electives, uh, meaning we just ask that if your student is interested in taking uh, in the material or the content that we uh, that they go ahead and sign up for it um, and enjoy the course and enjoy the learning. Uh, I don't have much for 12th graders. I think that's actually it for me. Please just double check with your uh, students counselor that they have fulfilled all the requirements for social studies uh, before you start signing up. So that is it for me. Are there any questions for me? Ms. Parsons, there's a question in the chat. I mean, in the Q&A. Okay, so art, uh, AP Art History is technically an art credit where we teach it in social studies as a history course, but it is an art credit. Thank you for that, Ms. Parsons. Thank you. Um, I don't think there's any more questions about social studies. Ms. Park, um, Ms. Markowitz, I know there were some questions uh, about MCN University Shady Grove. Did you want to expand on some of this while we wait for Ms., uh, Mr. Thompson? Sure, absolutely. Um, let me go ahead, back to those questions. So, all the MC classes are going to be free, but the University of Shady Grove um, is separate from those MC classes. It just happens to be a location where our students will take a class through MC, um, and they're just the building uh, because it's close by to Wooten that houses that class. Um, but all the other classes through MC, um, you can get that schedule. I don't even think it's out yet for the fall. I believe Ms. Young told me it's opens in March. And so um, what I recommended is to email her and she's very responsive. She does work part-time, but she's located in the counseling department um, and she's wonderful to talk to if you have questions. And um, I know she did mention that she and her counterpart at MC will be hosting an information session on, I believe it was March 23rd. Um, and those details will follow. I'm not sure if it's a webinar like this or in person with students. So stay tuned for that information. She'll be sure to share that out just as Mr. Nelson did about tonight's event and his weekend updates. And let's see what else there is. Is there a limit to the number of courses a student can take as a dual uh, credit? So I don't believe there's technically a limit. However, it's not recommended to take more than two because um, you have to keep in mind that they are college level credits. And so the work is very different than the work of a high school student is typically used to. Um, and, it, and then therefore it requires a lot more work and it's also a different schedule than the Wooten schedule. So typically the classes might be like three days a week um, for an hour. And so it's a different feel and it might not match uh, what your child is planning to take also at Wooten High School. So all students must take at least four classes to be considered a student in MCPS. So whether that's one class at MC and three at Wooten, uh, you can do the math, um, but that's also very important for all students to have in their schedules. So great questions. And Mr. Thompson, you've arrived. So uh, I'm gonna pass it off to Mr. Thompson, the head of our wonderful science department. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Markowitz. Um, apologize in advance if my dog chimes in. Thought he was going to be well behaved, uh, but no. So, um, as rising seniors, uh, you sit in a pretty good position. I hope 
that uh, all the students represented here have met their state requirements for science as far as graduation goes. But I also hope uh, they don't feel like they're finished with science at Wooten High School because we have some excellent options to uh, keep some really strong academic momentum from 11th grade through 12th grade uh, into the college years and hopefully uh, match some student interests. So um, really, these are the courses that uh, students would pick from if they've satisfied all of their uh, requirements. And I think you would know whether your son or daughter has a natural interest in this, but I would also recommend some that I feel all students should take. Uh, number one on here, AP Environmental Science. This is uh, for students interested in science or not, um, because we're all citizens. Uh, we all are going to be, you know, hopefully making smart decisions as voters. Uh, it's, it's really good to know a lot of the science behind what humans have done in their interactions with the planet. So that's a great course for that. That's a single period course. Uh, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, those are gonna be great courses to prepare for the academic rigor of college, uh, especially if uh, your son or daughter is considering science, any science as a major. Uh, we have a bunch of seniors taking AP Physics One, even if they've already taken Honors Physics, this could be um, a suitable follow-up to that. It, is, it has a lot more rigor then honors physics. So it, it's a good academic challenge for that um, senior year. And then if they are in AP Physics 1, I would invite them to take AP Physics C during the, the senior year. That is a calculus-based course. It's really a strong recommendation for students considering the major of uh, any form of engineering in college. Um, it, it's an excellent course that does match the first year physics courses that are taught to engineering majors. Uh, but AP options are not the only options we would provide. Uh, we have these honors electives. The big four are uh, honors nutrition, forensic science, anatomy, physiology, and molecular biology. If your son or daughter has an interest in pursuing any one of the life sciences, uh, medical field, then something like anatomy, physiology, or molecular biology is going to be a smart choice. Honors nutrition science is another one of those courses that I feel everybody should take. Uh, really learn the science behind how food is produced and, and what happens to the biology and chemistry, what happens to that food once we consume it. Uh, it's really going to help you make lifelong, smart lifelong choices about the foods we consume. And there are cooking labs in there. So you're actually uh, getting to, to put what you're learning in practice. We use the Wooten kitchen uh, to um, divide up and carry out these food labs. Uh, forensic science, for those students who have that interest in shows like CSI, uh, crime scene investigation shows. Forensic science is a great interdisciplinary take. Uh, biology, chemistry, and physics all go in. Uh, you do some real case study analysis and uh, crime scene reenactments uh, where uh, data is presented and students are learning a, a lot of really high level science, including DNA analysis that uh, would help with uh, forensic science investigations. So if um, you know, we've had some people ask, well, what could I take if I'm thinking about law school in my distant future? Actually, this would be a good course to take to learn some of the science behind crime scene investigations. So I'd like to think that there are a lot of great options for all seniors. I, I love all seniors uh, to take a science with us. We do have a lot of graduates that take five, six, seven, eight credits of science before they're done at Wooten. So it would not be odd to uh, go above and beyond the state requirements for graduation. And that's really all I need to say about it, but I'd be happy to answer any, uh, any questions that have popped up in the Q&A. Uh, and also I, I point out that um, I've been getting great questions for, from um, parents that we met with last week, all week, and I'm very happy to answer those via email. Emails are pretty easy to find on, um, on the Wooten website, and um, you can shoot a question there and I should get back to you within 24 hours. Okay, I see uh, maybe Mr. Rohner did already answer one of the questions up here uh, as far as an engineering type course. Right now, our best engineering preparation would be AP Physics C, and I also recommend computer programming courses to prepare for that major. Any um, others, Thomas, Mr. Rohner? Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Thompson. Any, any other questions? Uh, no, not that we see it currently. I was just going to ask you, is there certain courses maybe that are seem to be uh, more interest based on majors or any other considerations you've seen over the years? 
yeah, um, as I was kind of delineating, if, if um, a student has an interest in a life science, then even though chemistry doesn't qualify as a life science major, they're gonna take some high level chemistry. So uh, having our AP chemistry course, we have excellent teachers, that's gonna be a great preparation for a course that often uh, can weed uh, freshmen or sophomores out of those majors. Of course, AP biology is good for life science majors. Uh, but then also the anatomy, physiology, and the uh, molecular biology course. And I'd like to recommend the molecular biology because there again, you're doing some pretty high level labs. And so um, when students are applying for internships or, or potential jobs at biomedical engineer or biomedical research firms, uh, having that course shows a really good training in um, DNA lab technique. And so uh, more than just content with all these AP courses in that um, molecular biology course in particular, you're getting some pretty high level lab training. So um, that's something I would recommend. And then of course, uh, as I mentioned for the engineering majors uh, in math, you would wanna max out on calculus. In physics or in science, you would wanna max, max out on AP Physics C, both semesters of that. And then uh, computer programming courses are, are pretty wise to take. It was great, Mr. Thompson. Um, Mr. Thompson will hang out for a minute or two, just in case there are any more questions. Uh, the next person we have up is our principal, Mr. Nelson. He just walked in. We're going to give him some time to welcome and say hello. Mr. Nelson, how are you doing this evening? Thanks for joining us. Great, Mr. Rohner. Thank you very much. I feel like I Zoom floated in, maybe didn't quite walk in. So it's great to be with you all, and thank you very much for handing that off, Brad. I just wanted to take the opportunity to say good evening to everyone that's joining us here on this webinar. My name is Doug Nelson and I'm the principal of Wooten. I appreciate everyone taking some time out of what I'm sure are very busy schedules to hear this important information that supports our articulation process at the school. I've tried to do my very best to make some connections to the vision at Wooten and why the articulation process really strongly aligns to and supports what we're trying to do at the school. And the vision that I have for Wooten for it to be an effective school, it has to be a school where students are challenged and they feel that they belong. And when we are taking a look at learning about course offerings at the school and what courses students will select next year, this really aligns to that vision, particularly if we're thinking about this idea of challenge. So for students, our purpose here tonight, and for parents, you are receiving information that helps you know and understand what are the course offerings so that students are always developing new knowledge and refining skills that we need, that we know that they need to have, so that they're picking that course that keeps all of their current progress moving forward. And so not only are students going to be learning about what might be a future interest, that they will tackle when they move into college and career, or whether they just want to kind of experience or, or learn new content in an area that they've never studied before. All of that really is about finding the class that's going to give them that push. So tonight, as you learn about the courses and the offerings, one thing that I just want to make sure that you're really thinking about and centering yourselves around at home is making that right choice and talking about it. So our purpose is to make sure we give you the information that helps you make that informed decision. But one connection I wanna make for everyone is in high school, we know that students are maturing, they're growing up and they're developing their independence. That does not mean that you do not want to engage with your child at home around this process. Even if they are carrying greater responsibilities, ask those probing, probing questions, find an opportunity to sit down and see what courses they are thinking they might take and ask questions about why they are making that decision. We're really refining skills that they are going to use, not only going into next year, but then subsequent years, whether that's college and career. Just a couple of, uh, just one other piece of advice that I want to impart. While you're uh, asking questions or learning more about why your child is making decisions that they are, please know that student interest is a very big part of selecting courses. We know that research supports that students that have that high interest will go further with their study and they will go deeper in their learning. So 
asking students about that interest and allowing them a bit of independence to select what courses they want to take is an important part of this process. And the last thing that I will say that the team at Wooten is a very talented one. You have great supportive counselors, wonderful resource teachers that oversee and support our departments. You have a supporting administrator who knows your students very well. Please make sure that you reach to, out to us if you have any questions or you'd like to learn more about the content that we're presenting. We are here to support you in this process. And please know we're just a phone call or an email away so that we can get you the information that you need. Thank you so much for being here and I appreciate it. I'm gonna turn it back over to the team and whoever is next uh, to present the content. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next up, we have Dr. Fetterman is in the house. What are we talking about? Spanish, Latin, French, ASL? What are we doing here? All of the above and more. I will turn it over to you to share the course request for the senior parents. Thank you, Mr. Fetterman, for joining us tonight. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Runner. So today I'll just be talking about briefly about what our course offerings and sequencing for our upper level world language courses, as well as some other considerations such as the seal of biliteracy um, and some other future forward looking things. So to begin, the options for rising seniors would be the primary and recommended sequencing is to continue with the current language of study that they've already begun. That is because at the upper level, they're able to continue um, to develop and uh, grow in their language abilities to deepen their level of proficiency and competency in the language. However, they may want to in senior year enroll in level one of a new language or additionally to uh, dip their toe in possibly becoming trilingual or learning another language. The graduation requirements, as mentioned earlier, are two credits of the same world language. This may be a change from what um, you are accustomed to. Um, it is recommended that students are enrolled as many years as possible in the high school level with the world language that they currently study. This is not only to help them attain a meaningful level of proficiency, but it also demonstrates an, a willingness to embrace rigor. Additionally, as a rising senior, they have the opportunity to join the world language honor societies that we have in French, Spanish, and Chinese. And then also they have the opportunity next year to earn the Maryland Seal of Biliteracy and potentially university credits if they enroll in an AP course. So the Maryland Seal of Biliteracy is a designation that students would attain at graduation. And this essentially attests that they are proficient, they are bilingual and biliterate in English and one or more other languages. This can be a language that they have learned through schooling through our program, or it can be a language that they speak at home. Um, and with the seal of biliteracy, they will receive a medal that they can wear at graduation, as well as the seal of biliteracy imprinted on their diploma. And this communicates to college admissions officials and university uh, admissions officials, as well as future employers that they are biliterate and bilingual and have the language skills in those languages. Uh, and it communicates this in an official manner because it is a nationally normed and recognized exam. Um, and lastly, if students score a four or five on an AP language exam that they may have taken this year or next year, they will automatically receive the seal in that language. And I'll talk a little bit about the um, our AP scores at the end, or they can also test in the language through a test that we offer in the late fall, early winter. These are all the languages in which we offer courses. So essentially your child would continue with the language of study that they are already enrolled in. The sequencing for ASL, Chinese, and Latin is fairly sequential and straightforward. So if they're in ASL 2 this year as a junior, next year they would take ASL 3. If they're in Chinese 5 currently, next year they would take AP Chinese. If they're in Latin 3 this year, next year they would take Latin 4. The course offerings for French and Spanish are a little 
bit different because we have additional languages in the upper level that offer multiple pathways for students to continue with their language studies. Before I show you the French and Spanish ones, I wanted to just make a brief note that all of our courses level three and higher with the exception of ASL offer students the opportunity to earn additional points on their weighted GPA. So those would be all the courses listed as H for honors, AL for advanced level and AP for advanced placement. Um, I will show you the French course sequencing for next year, which is as follows. French one through four is sequential, one, two, three, four. Um, after French four, they can continue on to level five or they can continue to AP French language and culture. The same is true for French five if they're currently in French five. Either of the, four, the French five options that we offer this year, they would go on to AP next year or they can continue to French six. And if they are in AP French this year, next year they would enroll in French seven. French five, French six, and French seven for next year will be a combined course. This is a French cinema class. This um, students view and analyze the same films, but the proficiency level expectations for language ability is different depending on the level in which they are enrolled. For Spanish, the sequencing is fairly sequential, one, two, three, four, five. After uh, Spanish five, they can enroll in AP Spanish language and culture. One thing to note is that if your child is currently in Spanish four, next year they can continue to Spanish five or they can proceed directly to AP Spanish language and culture, depending on their preferences and if they want to enroll in AP course or not. This year, if they are in AP Spanish Language and Culture, they can continue to either Spanish 7 or AP Spanish Literature. And if they're currently in AP Spanish Literature, next year they can continue to Spanish 7, which is a culture and communication and cinema course. So again, ASL, Chinese, and Latin is sequential all the way through. We have additional upper level courses in French and Spanish. One last thing to note is that we have a 98% AP exam pass rate for all of the languages in which we offer AP courses, which would be French, Chinese, and both of the AP Spanish courses we offer. This means that our students are attaining a very high level of proficiency and a working communicative ability, meaning that they're able to communicate with real people in real world situations. Additionally, as I mentioned, um, about three quarters of our students who are enrolled in AP are automatically earning the seal of biliteracy because they're earning a four or a five on the AP exam. I will just briefly check the Q&A to make sure there are no questions. It doesn't look like there are any. So, Mr. Rohner, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fetterman. And, you know, I was thinking out loud. I was like, man, you know, once you get to a certain level, MCPS should like pay the teachers and the students to go to the country of, of whatever language it is on an on expense trip <laughs> by MCPS. That's what I was thinking. Wouldn't I'm that be great? Here. That, wouldn't that be great? Be Thank amazing. you, Dr. Fetterman, for explaining all this. Um, next up, we have math. Miss Kayla White is in the house. Um, I am always fascinated about trigonometry, so I'm hoping you're going to speak a lot about that, Ms. White. Um, but thank you for joining us. Oh, she shook her head. Nope, she's not going to talk about trigonometry tonight. Ms. White, I hand it over to you. Thank you for joining us. I hope you're having a good evening. I do too. I hope I can live up to your expectations. I will make sure to drop some trig jokes throughout this session. Okay, friends. Um, my name is Miss Kayla White, and I am the resource teacher at Wooten High School. I'm going to talk real quick about just general graduation requirements for math that as rising seniors, you are probably familiar with, and then take a look at your options for senior year courses in math class. Um, you must have four math credits in order to graduate. Many of you got one or two of those in middle school, probably algebra one or geometry. But even with that said, you are gonna get the great pleasure of sitting in a math class for all four years of high school. So that means some of you will graduate with four or five, six plus math credits, which is really awesome. 
Um, everyone is required to pass Algebra 1 in geometry. We do have a state testing requirement for Algebra 1. We just had a makeup test a couple weeks ago, so I'm sure all of you are on track there for that testing requirement. So let's take a look about courses for next year. So here is our course sequence. If you are looking at this, you can hopefully probably identify what course you are in right now and see all of these crazy arrows, especially as we get to the right-hand side of your options. So I think sometimes we think math is really linear, um, but after Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, especially your options really open up. So I'm gonna give you um, a little idea of these courses kind of on the right and what might help you decide where you wanna take, what you wanna take next year. Um, and we'll see if we have any questions from there. So here on this also kind of overwhelming slide, I would direct your attention most likely to the blue or the yellow. The blue represents our four calculus course options. Um, if you are, I heard Mr. Thompson talking about this earlier, if you are considering going into engineering, technology, math, computer science, you most likely will need a college level calculus class. Um, so it makes the most sense to take a calculus class in high school. So we have four calculus options, calculus AB, which is one semester, of college calculus, calculus BC, which is two semesters of college calculus, multivariable calculus, which you can only take if you are in calculus BC now, that would um, get you a third um, exposure to calculus three at the college level. And then we have a honors calculus class for those of you who are interested in taking calculus, but don't necessarily need or want the AP credit for that or to take the AP exam. Um, you can see the prerequisites are different. So students who are currently in honors pre-calculus would be eligible for our AP courses. And if you are in regular pre-calculus, you would take our honors calculus course. Um, other options, if calculus is not something that you are super interested in, if trigonometry is not your favorite math subject, um, then you can also go into a statistics pathway, which would honestly probably be more helpful for folks interested in a research um, based career, if you're going to be a psychologist, even if you want to go to law school, anything that is going to require you to read research, you will most likely need to take a college level statistics course. So we have two options there. Um, you can take honors statistics, which if you are talking to your friends now, that has just been renamed. It was intro to statistics this year. It is getting renamed next year to reflect the fact that it is an honors and weighted course. And you can take honors statistics as long as you have taken algebra two or higher. Um, you are eligible to take our AP statistics course, which is definitely a little bit more rigorous than honor statistics and could potentially get you that college credit. And you can go to AP statistics as long as you have taken a pre-calculus course or above, um, or you could come from our intro to statistics class. Down at the bottom, we have in red kind of two more non-traditional options. We have, and I just want to, um, those are new names. So a course that is coming back to Wootwin High School from MCPS. Um, is statistics and mathematical modeling. This is great for folks who are looking to get that fourth math credit, but maybe math is not your area of expertise. Um, this is gonna offer just an intro to statistics and then kind of like an algebra three, like some other math topics that you have not learned in your previous math classes. And that is eligible to anyone coming from algebra two. And then we also have the option of financial mathematics, which was previously called quantitative literacy. Um, and that would be eligible for anyone who is coming from an Algebra 2 course. So things you just might want to consider is, as we're getting into senior year, are there specific requirements for college or career that would make a calculus or statistics course more um, suited for you? And some colleges do have a pre-calculus requirement, um, so you might want to take a look at that as well. Um, but for the most part, you do have lots of options. Hopefully this is pretty clear. Um, on what you need to take before you take those courses as a senior. Um, and I'm just going to take a quick look to see if we have a question. If currently in Calc with Apps, is it possible to take AP Stat? Um, yes, that would be that would be fine. So um, that is totally possible. If you are in a calculus course, you can go to AP Stat next year. I think there was just so many arrows on that flowchart. We did try to depict the most common paths. But yes, also just something that maybe someone is thinking, AP Stat commonly people also do take um, with another math course. So if you're someone who wanted to take calculus and AP Stat, you could do that at the same time. But yes, if you are in a calculus class right now, any of the calculus classes, you are most definitely eligible to take AP Stat next year. 
Okay. With that, I think I am good to go, Mr. Roner, unless there's some other. Yeah, question. tell us about this multivariable calculus. What, what are they doing there? I've observed that class and it, it dawned on me after like a half an hour, they were still working on the same problem. Is there anything else uh, you should uh, give us information about that one? Um, sure. So multivariable calculus is our calculus three course offered after Calc BC. Um, we do have a option to take the college um, test from the University of Maryland. So at, in May, our students in multivariable calculus will take the same multivariable calculus exam being taken at the University of Maryland. And you could get a certificate for credit, which means if you did go to UMD, they would accept that you have taken multivariable calculus, even though that is not a AP course technically. Um, it is also possible that you could send that certificate to another school of your choice. Um, but it is a great course, especially again, for those of you going engineering or that route. And if you wanna be in a class that you do one problem in 42 minutes, that is definitely what happens there. They also do a lot of cool technology things because multivariable um, calculus is all in 3D. So there's a, definitely like a computer science and tech component there. Thank you for that. So I wasn't, all right, so I was right. It was one problem of uh, 45 minutes. That's, that's what happened. Yeah, no, that is definitely what is happening there. Well, thank you, Ms. White. That was very, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that information. If you'll just hang out for a couple minutes, just in case there's any last minute questions. Oh, looks like there's another one. Um, and this one, might we might need Ms. Markowitz. If a student takes a dual enrollment class, does the, do they qualify for the required fourth year of mathematics or must the student must enroll in a Wooten class? And this comes up often. Um, Ms. Markowitz or Ms. White, if you want to answer that one. Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so it it depends on your child and what requirements they have. So they have to um, pass four years of math um, and then they have to sit in four years of math in high school. So the answer is yes, they can take the class at MC um, that will uh, appear on the high school transcript if they choose to do that. And that is considered their fourth year of math. So they would have to choose to make sure it does appear on their high school transcript because all students have to sit in the math class. So yes, it will count, but make sure that you understand that whatever that child gets in the class will appear on their high school transcript. Thank you for that. Thank you. And it doesn't look like there's any other um, general questions that we would want to answer to the group here. So thank you, Ms. White. Um, at this time, uh, Ms. Markowitz, unless you want to add any more math, we're going to go to EP Capstone. Um, at this, Ms. Markowitz, sorry, you were on. Is that good to go? Um, at this time, what we're going to do is there is AP Capstone, uh, which is offered uh, to juniors and seniors. Um, and Ms. Hansen is our signature program coordinator. And she couldn't be with us tonight. So instead, what she did, um, she kind of created a, a video um, that is three minutes um, just to explain the AP Capstone program here at Wooten and also so you could she could introduce herself because she didn't want you um, as parents of seniors uh, going into the last year to make sure you guys got a little glimpse of the AP Capstone program. So we're going to share our screen as Mark Witz is and we're just going to listen to Ms. Hansen and any questions you have please put in a QA. and a uh, we should be able to respond to um, any questions you have? If not, we can always follow up with Ms. Hansen um, and kind of get back. Um, so, Ms. Markowitz, go ahead and uh, let's um, let's listen to what Ms. Hansen has. My name to is share Michelle Hansen, and I'm the Signature Program Coordinator at Wooten. And what I'd like to do tonight is tell you a little bit about our AP Capstone program that we are offering to the entire student body. The program has actually been at Wooten for a few years, but we piloted it through the Humanities and Arts and STARS programs. Let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about the program. Um, as you can see, it's something offered through College Board and they call it the AP Capstone Diploma Program. Now, in order to achieve the capstone, the students are required to take a course called AP Seminar and then the follow-on course, which is called AP Research. And uh, there's a better description of these in the course bulletin uh, if you want to take a look there. But essentially, AP Seminar, we teach students how to do high-level research and report on it. And in AP Research, we actually do that 
um, in a year long project of the student's choice. Now, in order to get the diploma, the students must also take four other AP uh, classes and exams and pass them. And if they take the capstone classes and the four other classes and pass everything, then they will have earned the AP capstone diploma. It is the highest distinction that College Board gives to students in the United States. Now, let me go ahead and um, tell you uh, the parameters. Um, anyone may take the AP capstone classes. Um, typically, seminar starts in 11th grade and AP research is in 12th grade. However, if students who are, who are in ninth grade have taken um, an AP course, such as AP government or AP computer principles, computer science principles, they're also eligible to take the AP seminar class in 10th grade. Um, and let's see, I wanna make sure I don't, I don't miss anything. I will say typically AP seminar is a great class to start in 11th grade. And as you can see here, there are many benefits from being part of this. I think one of the biggest benefits is that students are able to work at a really high level before they get to college. So by the time they get there, they hit the ground running and they typically have no problems whatsoever writing papers and doing research. So um, the other thing I really like about this program is that it's, it's also a lot about student choice. Students are able to pick what they study. We teach them how to study it and then they, they actually um, pick what they study. So um, just so you know, we do let colleges know that students are AP capstone diploma candidates. And um, last year we had 50 students at Wooten graduate with this diploma. So we're pretty excited about that. If you need more information, you can always get a hold of me. My information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, I am also on the Wooten website um, and you can check out the pages in the course bulletin. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Michelle Hansen and I'm the Thank you, Ms. Hansen. Oh, she was gonna go again. Look at that, uh, participants. Um, thank you. Um, again, that was important for us to, to share some of the capstones information um, and about the signature program. Um, again, you can always reach out to her specifically. Um, but it looks like there is one question in there, Ms. Markowitz, you want to, you want to answer? Okay, we're going to, just going to answer that specifically. Uh, next person we have are, uh, is Mr. Lowe. Mr. Lowe, welcome. Are you able to, yeah, there Hello. you go. There yeah, you. Yeah, Mr. I'm, Lowe, I'm, how you doing? Hey, good to see everybody. Good evening. All right, uh, so we're here to talk about 12th grade, I take it. Let me uh, share my screen here and make sure I get this right. All right, are you all able to see that? Yes, it looks good. Okay, great, because I had some trouble with this uh, earlier. All right. There we are. Okay, um, so good to be with you, everybody. Uh, my name is Mr. Lowe. I'm the head of the English department at Wooten. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about 12th grade, which has the most options of any grade for students going into English. Um, as you know, MCPS students need uh, four years of English credits. And 12th, uh, they don't really have any options as far as like a path to go on and like they do in math or science until they get to 11th grade. So based on where your student is now, that's going to inform the decision they make about next year. So currently you have a student who's either in honors 11 or um, AP Lang. Um, and there, that's their, that would probably be their first AP English experience. So um, you have, a, they have a few options for next year. And it really depends on what your student wants from their senior year, the level of um, the number of AP classes that they've already signed up for, and so on and so forth. So um, if they are in honors English 11, and that feels really comfortable for them, 
they do have the option of, of staying on that path and taking Honors English 12 next year. We also have AP Lang and AP Literature available to students who took Honors 11 this year. Now, this is important. I really want to stress this because it means more choices. There's sometimes a, a misconception that a student will not be able to take AP Literature if they did not take um, AP Language. That is not the case. And for some students, AP Literature might even be um, more appealing as far as its content in their senior year. Um, we'll get into a little bit of the differences in just a few minutes, but I just want to make sure everybody's aware that any of those options are open, even if the student has not taken AP uh, courses in their 11th grade year. Okay, so let's just uh, start out here by talking about what they can expect from an Honors 12 experience. It's not going to look drastically different from what they've done in the past. The big pivot in uh, 12th grade is that they're going to go back to a stronger focus on narrative and fiction, where 11th grade really ramps up the focus on rhetoric, persuasive writing, informational texts, uh, synthesis and research and all of that kind of stuff. Whether your, your student was in Honors 11 or AP Lang, that has really been the defining focus of their year, or at least it will be by the end of the year. OK, um, so for 12th grade, whether they're going into Honors 12 or whether they're going into AP Lit, that's going to go back to a, a pivot to um, a focus on poetry, a focus on narrative writing, on personal memoir, on plays, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as writing tasks, it's it's still that progression that MCPS has built where there's a mul multiple experiences of uh, you know, different types of writing. So there's personal narrative writing, there's comparisons between different texts that are focusing on different point of views on a similar subject. Um, still some, some argument, but it's coming back um, around to a more personal focus. Um, and then also sort of building on some of the memoir skills that they developed in 10th grade, um, they, they finished with a, a, a personal commencement speech. These aren't all the projects they're doing, but these are some of the main tasks that, that, that they have to, to write about in 12th grade. Um, so again, uh, if your student uh, wishes to stay in the honors track, if that's where they feel most comfortable, it's going to be a nice pivot back to sort of reading stories and narratives and discussing literature. Um, for the options for AP, um, whether your student has already taken an AP experience or whether 12th grade will be their first, they have a few options. AP Lang 12 is going to focus on the same content and cover pretty much the same content that they would have had in AP Lang 11. OK, it's just an option for students who felt like maybe, you know, their schedule wouldn't permit it or they just felt really comfortable in an honors course um, so that they, they don't miss out on it. Um, again, that's going to be a class that really focuses more on nonfiction than fiction. For some students, that's kind of a deal breaker, um, especially their senior year. Um, they might be more interested in sort of the creative writing side of things. They might want to study more poetry. Um, they might be interested in those sorts of texts rather than informational historical things um, or vice versa. So really, I would say, you know, gear towards interest if the student hasn't taken either a AP course yet. Now, if your student has taken AP Lang in 11 and they were successful, I really, really recommend that they go into AP Lit, okay? The only situation where I would say go back to, to Honors 11 is if the schedule is just overburdened with, with APs, um, if they feel like they've already gotten the college credit that they need, um, and they just feel like it would make their senior year more manageable, that I totally understand. But um, if they've done uh, an AP course in English and they've been successful, I think it's really great if they can get both of those experiences with AP Lang and AP Lit before they go to college. Okay. Um, so again, some of the differences, Lang is really focused on rhetoric, 
whereas lit is really focused on literature. It's going to be, you know, digging back into poetry and plays and such. If you or your student have any questions about the differences or about, you know, what they should take or what's going to work best for their schedule, they're welcome to come see me. You're welcome to email me, whatever I can do to help you decide. Um, as far as workload, I think I already sort of talked about this with the um, the honors course, but in AP, there is going to be a stronger focus on um, more frequent writing practice that is assessed. So that is something that students should consider as they make a, a choice about whether to take an AP class or not. Um, there will be a lot of reading in AP literature. There will be a lot of reading in AP Lang, but AP Lit is going to be the class where you're more likely to go home with a big book and have a lot of reading at home. Okay. We do have a few uh, electives in senior year. There might be room in the schedule for uh, them to branch out and take some other things. Um, some of the things that we're always excited about, journalism, yearbook, some newer courses that we're looking at, African-American literature, race and gender and Shakespeare, uh, film studies and creative writing. All of these courses um, can fit generally in a half semester. Uh, journalism yearbook and film and creative writing could be full year if they're interested. These do not satisfy the required English credit, but they fall under English because they're project-based, writing, creative sorts of classes. Um, they're not going to have to go home and, you know, crank out pages and pages of writing, but um, they will they will be discussing things from a humanities lens in those classes. All right, that's enough for me. Um, good to be with you. Have a great evening. Again, Mr. Lowe, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, next up, um, and our actual last presenter is Ms. Rebecca O'Neill. I'm going to make sure I get this right. She has several departments under her. She's got the fine arts, she's got child development, and she's got PE, she's got health and in fine arts, and we got the physical art, we got the music, and I know I forgot one, maybe. Welcome, visual, Ms. O'Neill. Visual, thank you. Yes, I'm going to um, talk, I'm going to start off with fine arts. Um, at this point, going into senior year, um, if your student has not taken their fine arts credit, they need to do that. Um, but many of our students have taken their fine arts credit, so they may be looking at these classes as um, elective. So after your fine arts credit, you want to continue in arts. Um, it can be um, for electives. You might have a little bit more room in your schedule. Um, you can take either a visual arts or a performing arts class. Um, here are our visual arts pathways. The classes here in teal are our, sorry, I'm trying to fix something on my screen. Um, our classes in teal are our, our entry level classes. We have our foundations of art and culture, which is going to be just a little bit of everything. It's not concentrated on any one thing. Um, students are going to explore a variety of materials and techniques. Um, we have our drawing class. We have our ceramics and sculpture class, our fashion illustration class, where they not only design their clothing, but they also produce it with hand sewing and machine sewing. Um, in preparation for their fashion show at the end of the year. We have our painting class and our intro to photography class, which is a digital photography class using digital camera, cell phone. They're working in color um, and learning some basic Photoshop as well. Um, from there, the pathways, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, however, your students can speak with their art teachers if they are currently in an art class to see where they should go next, because there might be some um, crossing over here on the chart um, if your student would like to. As you can see, all of our upper level um, art, visual arts classes are weighted credit. They're advanced level or AP classes. Um, we also do have this one um, art, uh, AP art history class. That's not part of any pathway. Um, students do need one visual art credit before they can take that, um, but that is also a visual arts class um, available for students. 
Um, next, we have our performing arts pathways. Again, um, things highlighted in teal are our entry level classes or our beginner classes. Um, we do have our chorus classes. Um, students do not have to be in chorus two as a prerequisite to continue on to show choir or a cappella. Um, our chorus two is our traditional chorus class. Um, students will learn a variety of music, they'll have um, a variety of performances, including our County Choral Festival. Um, students can sign up for that or they can jump right to show choir or a cappella with an audition. Um, and I will mention the auditions on the next slide, um, but show choir is singing, dancing, and choreography. Um, and a cappella is our highest level, most advanced choral class. Um, students are going to need to be able to learn music faster, have that higher level uh, music reading skills. Um, with our band and our orchestra, um, our entry level classes here are going to be for students who um, are maybe switching instruments and ready to learn a new instrument or students who are not currently in band this year. Um, students who are currently in band this year are going to actually sign up for the class that they are in right now. And then their playing test that will happen in March will serve as their audition. And if they are ready to move up a band level, the students or the teachers will let the students know then, and then the schedule will be adjusted. Um, Good. We have a guitar class. This is going to be an, our entry level guitar class. Students who have never picked up a guitar or even students with a little bit of experience can sign up for this class. Um, our, student, our teachers are really good at differentiating instruction and meeting the students where they are um, with on their instrument and giving them what they need. Um, jumping over then to theater, our theater one class um, is working on uh, line memorization, stage presence, being comfortable in front of crowds, getting ready for a variety of performances. And then we have our stage design class that is our um, focusing on backstage, um, producing, drawing, designing, and building those sets for our theater performances. Um, the pathways, I think, are self-explanatory here. The only thing I want to point out um, is advanced acting is just semester A. That would be paired with play directing in semester B. Um, that would be the same for the second year of that as well. And stage design is repeatable for credit. We have our two classes over here, again, not really part of a pathway, but our entry level piano class, um, as well as our AP music theory class um, that requires two music credits um, as a prerequisite. Again, um, lots of opportunity for students to move on um, and take multiple years um, in our performing arts. Here's that audition information. Um, like I said, for choral classes, students will sign up for the class they want to be in. For show choir, the audition date hold the date of March 29th and acapella hold the date of March 28th. We don't have the time and location, the, the logistics done yet. Um, your student will wanna email the choral director, Mr. Keith Schwartz, to get the details. Um, and for our band and orchestra classes, students should sign up for the class they are currently in changes will be made after those playing tests. Or if students are not satisfied with what they've been recommended for, they can audition um, by submitting a video during the month of March. And again, more details, you would email our band director or orchestra director. All right, PE then, moving on to physical education. Students need one PE credit. All of our PE classes listed on the right hand side are one semester classes. Students can take them for the full year or at this point, if they've had their PE credit, they can take it for a second or third or even fourth year. They are repeatable for credit um, or they can mix and match and take each class um, different semesters. Our net sports, team sports, basketball, flag football, and soccer are all going to have an emphasis on rules and gameplay, um, technique, skills and movement of the game. Our lifetime sports class is our less competitive um, than your typical PE class. Um, the units are going to be walking, cornhole, bocce, and badminton. Um, and then we have our yoga and stretching class and our weight training class as well. Um, health, half a credit of health, 
um, health A. Um, I many most I believe of our students have taken this class. If they haven't, they need to make sure they get that on their schedule. And I have had some emails about health A being offered online, and it will be offered online um, through MCPS Summer School. And that information will come out in March or April through the county. And then last, we have child development. We have a preschool at Wooten where the students sign up to work with our 10 children who come to us for their preschool program. Um, the students are responsible for planning all of the activities for the preschool, teaching all of the activities, and then they also do some observation as well where they're completing assignments related back to um, the things that we are learning about in our first six weeks, our training in child development. This is going to be a class with no homework, no tests, no quizzes, um, maybe a class that's going to help your students find a little bit of balance in their schedule. There's also some SSL hours that come along with it. So if they're still in need of that, it's five a semester or 10 for the year. Child Development 1 is our entry level class. Um, so if students can take this ninth through 12th grade, um, if they've taken Child Development 1, maybe they wanna take Child Development 2, um, that continues to work in our preschool. There is a industry certification that goes along with that class um, that says they've had the two years experience. I have preschools and daycares calling us up. They want our students for after school jobs um, and summer jobs in the preschools and daycares in our community. And they do wanna talk to our students with the certification. Um, our guided research continues to work in our preschool lab with our preschoolers, but their topics are bridging over to um, be specifically more um, in tune with elementary and middle um, education. Um, for your rising seniors, they are ready if they would like to take our education internship. Um, this is a weighted credit. You can do it single, double, or triple period. The majority of the students do it double period. They can um, intern in any of our feeder schools or private schools, um, any grade levels, subjects, um, and they're going to be working hands-on um, in the classroom with the teacher side by side. Um, there is no prerequisite. They do not need to have taken a child, even one child development class, although at least one is helpful, um, but they do not have to take all three classes to go into the, the internship. Um, transportation is not required since we do have two schools that are within walking distance. They would be required to stay until 2.30 um, and go five days a week. So that would work out well if they have extracurriculars after school they need to come back for or after school jobs. Um, and the only other thing I want to mention, because it's a little bit different than all the other classes, and this goes for the education internship as well as the general internship, um, students still need to register for seven classes. It's not a choice on um, synergy register for the internships. They're going to complete the Google form, the interest form. Um, it can be found on the Wooten website. I have a QR code for it here as well. And then when students meet with their counselors, they will have the one, two, or three classes in mind that they want to drop. Um, their counselors will discuss that with them, drop those classes, and input that internship on their schedule. Um, I think that's all I have. I'm going to check the chat for questions. And if I don't see anything, I think I'm passing it back to Mr. Brad Rohner. Yes, uh, there was one question. Is there any way you could just review? I, I, I was There was a question about the course and sequence for photography. I, I believe there's a photography one and photography two. And then what what is the next levels? If you want to just, there's a question about just that, that course and sequence. Yeah, let me go. Let me get it, pull it up. Okay, so students can either take the AP 2D art and design. Oh, I'm sorry, are you, was this the question? Is for, this is just for photography. Okay, so the AP 2D photography, it is an AP class, but students are not submitting their portfolios. Um, it's going to be a class that gives them a little bit more freedom, um, still getting you know into learning about AP, um, but they're not going to submit their portfolio. So they're maybe not really, you know, either ready to move on to the third level where they would, they want that extra buffer year, or um, they're just not planning to submit their portfolio. So they could take that. Thank you. And then this is a question maybe Ms. Markowitz is, I, and I can't recall the top of my head, is photography one repeatable? Or is that one of those courses? Um, I don't that think you can take it is. Once? 
It I is. I don't believe it is, Miss Markowitz. Maybe you can speak to that if I'm wrong. I don't think it is. I'll check. Oh, I don't. I think you're right, Miss O'Neill. I don't believe that you can just retake that class for credit. Yeah, I do. I do think I put all the classes you could repeat. I put it in parentheses. Well, thank you for that clarification, Miss O'Neill. Thank yeah. you for going over the most courses in any department, pretty much um, in that time frame. <laughs> um, that concludes this evening. Um, a special thanks again to Miss O'Neill to reviewing all of the departments. Um, special thanks to Miss Redman in the background responding to some of the question. Ms. Markowitz, as always, wonderful job, and thank you. Uh, another special thanks to Wooten PTSA for actually hosting this meeting on the webinar. Um, uh, for some of us, uh, you can't you can't do three webinars um, for one account um, through MCPS, so we had to borrow some accounts. So thank you, PTSA. Um, Ms. Markowitz, is there anything you would like to say in conclusion? No, but thank you so much, parents, for attending and being here. We love working with your children, and we look forward to continuing that work together with you. And please just reach out if you have any questions. And thanks again. Have a great evening. And I'm sure we will touch base between now and that graduation date in 2024. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.